The Man Who Named the Clouds, by Julie Hanna and Joan Holub. Illustrations by Paige Billin Fry. Question of the week: What is the value of looking at patterns in nature? Genre. A biography is an account of a person's life written by another person. A biography includes facts, details, and ideas the author thinks are important about the person. A person who daydreams is sometimes said to have his or her head in the clouds. But daydreams can lead to great accomplishments. As a boy, Luke Howard wondered about the weather and daydreamed about clouds. He began to study them as a hobby. When he grew up, he created the first practical scientific system for naming clouds. Luke Howard was born on November twenty eighth, seventeen seventy two, in the city of London, England. When he was young, he noticed there were different kinds of clouds. Some were high and feathery. Some were puffy on top and flat on the bottom. Others looked like gray blankets. Luke didn't get serious about studying clouds until he was ten years old. That's when he began keeping a weather journal to describe what he saw in the sky. Luke had three younger brothers, one younger sister, and three older half brothers. Many of them helped in the family's ironworks business. Their father didn't want his children to be lazy. He taught them the importance of working hard and learning. When Luke was a boy, it was popular to study science and nature. People wanted to know more about metals and chemicals that might help in manufacturing and making medicines. And Luke wasn't the only one who was curious about the weather. Many people kept weather journals, hoping to learn more about what caused clouds, rain, and fog. One theory was that clouds were bubbles of air, and that the sun's rays gave them the power to float. In the 1700s, the causes of weather were a mystery. Sailors and farmers could only watch for signs in nature to help them predict storms. In dry, sunny weather. They noticed a pine cone scales opened outward. If its scales folded inward, rain might be on the way. Rhymes like this one also helped in predicting the weather. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky at morning, sailors take warning. Sailors like red sunsets because it means the air in the west, where the sun sets, is dry. Wind usually moves weather from west to east, so dry air is coming, and the sky will be clear. If the sunrise sky is red colored, it means dry air has already moved from the west to the east, where the sun rises. There is a good chance clouds, rain, or even storms will soon come from the west. People made up sayings comparing clouds to shapes in nature, such as horses' tails or fish scales. Mares' tails bring storms and gales. Clouds are blown into wispy horsetail shapes by strong stormy winds. Mackerel sky, mackerel sky, never long wet, never long dry. Clouds shaped like the pattern of scales on a mackerel fish often bring quick showers that come and go. Luke and his family were members of a religion called the Religious Society of Friends, or Quakers. Because Quakers didn't belong to the Church of England, England's main church, they weren't allowed to go to the same schools as people who did. 
Instead, eight-year-old Luke and his younger brother William attended a Quaker boarding school in Burford, England. They lived at the school year-round, except for a short vacation each summer. As part of his lessons, Luke had to recite Latin words over and over. This wasn't interesting or fun at the time, but it came in handy years later. Luke finished school at age 15 and moved back home to live with his parents. He happily began his weather studies outside in the family garden. Twice a day in his journal, he recorded the weather conditions. He used a thermometer to learn the temperature of the air, a weather vane to check the wind direction, a rain gauge to measure the rainfall, and a barometer to measure the pressure of the atmosphere on the Earth's surface. Luke was still very interested in clouds. Since there were no scientific names for different types of clouds, it was hard to write about them. He painted pictures of clouds instead. These are some of his paintings. Cloud Study by Luke Howard, painted sometime between 1808 and 1811. Landscape and Cloud Study by Luke Howard, painted sometime between 1808 and 1811. Luke's father thought cloud watching was a waste of time. He wanted his son to learn a trade so he could get a good job. After a few weeks at home, Luke was sent away to work as an apprentice in a Quaker chemist shop, where medicines were made and sold. Luke worked long hours at the shop for seven years. He didn't have time to study the weather, so he was unhappy. When he finally returned home, he went to work for another chemist for a few months. One day, he cut his hand badly when a glass bottle of poisonous chemicals he was holding broke. After he was well again, his father loaned him the money to open his own small chemist shop. At age 24, Luke married a woman named Maria Bella Elliott. Their first daughter, Mary, was born the following year. About that time, Luke became the manager of a large chemical factory and shop in the English village of Plastow. He and his new family moved into a house there. Plastow wasn't crowded with tall buildings as London had been. There were wide spaces where Luke could see lots of sky. Upstairs, in his new house, he had a weather-watching room with big windows. He filled the shelves with his science books and instruments for recording conditions in the atmosphere. This was a happy time in Luke's life. He had a good job, and he had made friends who liked to study science. Now he could get back to his hobby of weather study. Luke was determined to find new ways to study the weather. In 1796, he joined a club called the Askesian Society. The word Askesian comes from a Greek word that means philosophical exercise or training. Most of the club's members were Quakers who wanted to learn about science. They did experiments and brainstormed to try to answer questions about weather, astronomy, electricity, and other branches of science. They wrote their ideas in reports and read them aloud at club meetings held twice a month. At every meeting, each member had to read a paper he had written or pay a fine. It wasn't easy to discuss clouds because everyone described their shapes differently. Luke knew clouds needed to be classified and named. But scientists had tried this before and failed because their systems weren't exact enough. Luke studied the work of a Swedish botanist named Carl von Linné, also known as Linnaeus. 
In 1735, Linnaeus had created a system for scientifically classifying plants and animals using Latin names. This gave Luke an idea for a way to classify clouds. At a society meeting in 1802, Luke read an essay he'd written called The Modification of Clouds. At the time, modification meant classification, or naming by categories. In his paper, Luke described three main cloud shapes and gave them Latin names. Cirrus, a Latin word that means curl of hair. Parallel, flexuous, or diverging fibers, extensible by increase in any or in all directions. Cumulus, a Latin word that means heap. Convex or conical heaps, increasing upward from a horizontal base. Stratus, a Latin word that means layer. A widely extended, continuous, horizontal sheet, increasing from below upward. He also described four other types of clouds, which were combinations of the three main ones. Cirrocumulus, Cirrostratus, Cumulostratus, and Cumulocirrostratus, or Nimbus. Nimbus means rain. Everyone in the Eschesian society was excited about his essay. Finally, someone had a good idea for a system to name clouds. Unknown to Luke, a Frenchman named Jean-Baptiste Lamarck had made up another cloud classification system earlier that same year. Lamarck believed there were many cloud types. He planned to name each of them in French. At first, there were arguments about which system was better. Was Latin, French, or maybe English the best language for the system? Latin was the official language of the Roman Empire for over 500 years, beginning about 31 BCE. Because of Rome's widespread influence, many other European languages were based on Latin. So scientists pointed out that people would probably understand Latin cloud names more easily than French ones. Latin Nubes Nebula Sol, Tonitras, Ventus. Italian, Nuvola, Neba, Sole, Tuono, Vento. Spanish, Nube, Niebla, Sol, Trueno, Viento. French, Nuage, Brouillard, Soleil, Tonnerre, Vent. English, Cloud, Fog, Sun, Thunder, Wind. In 1803, Luke's essay was printed in a magazine many scientists read and trusted, called Philosophical Magazine. Soon, his cloud-naming system became more popular than Lamarck's. Luke's essay was printed and sold in bookstores. His cloud-naming system appeared in the Encyclopedia Americana in the early 1800s. Still, scientists argued about his system. Was it really possible there were only seven cloud types, as Luke claimed? Although some people proposed different classification ideas, Luke never changed his list of seven cloud types. But over time, others did. In 1896, an important conference about weather was held in Paris, France. Scientists who attended agreed on a list of ten types of clouds. Each cloud type was given a name based on its shape and the height of its base. Five of Luke's original names were used on the new list. 
The other five were combinations or revisions of his cloud names. Low. Stratus. Cumulus. Stratocumulus. Middle. About six thousand six hundred feet, two thousand meters. Nimbostratus. Altostratus. Altocumulus. High. About nineteen thousand eight hundred feet, six thousand meters. Cirrus. Cumulonimbus. Cirrostratus. Cirrocumulus. You can tell different kinds of clouds apart by their shape and by how high they are in the sky. The sky often contains a mix of the ten types of clouds. Today, the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, an agency of the United Nations located in Switzerland, is the authority on clouds and weather. The WMO still uses these ten basic names. As news of his cloud naming system spread, scientists asked him to give speeches about weather. Luke's weather observations were published in 1818 in two book volumes called *The Climate of London*. Seven lectures on meteorology, 1837. Many people admired and praised Luke, but he always tried to be a good Quaker and stay humble. Luke and Maria Bella had a long marriage, and he enjoyed spending time with their eight children. Two of his sons worked in his chemist shop when they grew up. Luke's sister Elizabeth said that in his later years he was always having some of his children and grandchildren with him. Even as a very old man, Luke loved to watch the sky. By the time he died on March twenty-first, eighteen sixty-four, at the age of ninety-one, he and his cloud-naming system were famous around the world.